A Taylor series is an infinite series. If it's also a geometric series, then we can use this formula that we know, as is the first term divided by one minus r, to rewrite the series with no error. If it's not a geometric series though, we don't have a way of rewriting it. We talked about, we use Taylor polynomials, Taylor series to approximate functions that have no relationship to this sort of bizarre rational function. Um, so, and since we're not likely to use infinitely many terms in our Taylor polynomial, we have to at least discuss the error that occurs when we chop off a Taylor series, use the first part as the Taylor polynomial, and then think about what's that part that we chopped off the other end, that's the error, that's the leftover, that's the, the rest of the terms in the series that we might have used, but we're not using, so it introduces error into our approximation. Um, so this is one way to think about a Taylor polynomial. If we're writing it using a Taylor polynomial, a Taylor series to approximate a function f, I'm going to use as many terms of the Taylor series as I want or need, and I'm going to chop it off. And then you can see that what's left over here, we're going to call it the remainder. We call it r sub n. If, I, if you take the first n terms to make the nth order Taylor polynomial, then r sub n, that's the remainder after you took the first n terms. So r sub n of x is the error. It's the leftover part, the part we didn't actually include in our approximation. And here's the cool thing. This is Taylor's theorem. There is a way of figuring out the size of that error. So it's a little bit like the mean value theorem in the sense that this same, the C that we used in the mean value theorem is a different C here, but the same kind of idea. This says that think about the derivative that you used to get the nth term in your Taylor polynomial. It was the nth derivative. So for example, if you were going to use the 10th order Taylor polynomial, you would need the 10th derivative of your function. The n plus 1 is going to be the next derivative. So this says that there's some value of the next derivative in my little example, the 11th derivative, call it c, some input. If I put that into the 11th derivative and use that to write the next term in the series, that's the error. Now, kind of like the mean value theorem, it doesn't help you find C, but we're going to find that most of the time, a lot of the time, a lot of the time, we can put an upper limit on that next derivative, um, which will help us put an upper limit on our error. Let me just call your attention here. That remainder looks just like the next term in the Taylor series should have looked, except that instead of using a here, we're using c. So c could be anywhere along the interval between x and a, but still we're going to be able to put a limit on it in a lot of cases, or at least in all the cases that show up on the AP test. So notice that this theorem doesn't help us necessarily know the sign, S-I-G-N, of the error, but we can, we can know that the absolute value of the error, the difference, the absolute value of the difference between the actual um, value of the function we were trying to approximate and our approximation is less than, look at this, this part looks like, exactly like the um, next term, the n plus one -th term of the Taylor polynomial. And m is just some number you know is the maximum value of your n plus one -th derivative um, when you let x stay between you know, positive and between a spaces away from x. So what uh, a really common example, and you can walk through the example in your textbook is, if the function that we were trying to approximate is a sine or a cosine or any variation of a sine or a cosine, we, no matter which derivative we're taking, 
we know that the maximum output for a sine and a cosine and any one of its derivatives is 1 because sine and cosine have a range from negative 1 to 1. So that's an example of a one way you might find out the m. That's the easiest case. So check out this example for a problem that is more complicated than you would ever see on the AP test. So if you can follow this one, you're going to be in really good shape. All right, so in this example, we've been told a polynomial that can be used to approximate natural log of 1 plus x near the place where x equals 0. Um, and this is degree 2 because it has an x squared in it. So in order to find an error bound, a, a, maximum, uh, a maximum limit for the error, I need to consider the third derivative of the function I was trying to approximate. So I f of x is natural log of 1 plus x. I found the first derivative and the second derivative. Now I'm going to find the third derivative, f triple prime of x. The negative 2 is going to come down to multiply the negative 1, and that's going to make 2x plus 1, 1 plus x, to the negative third. So I'm going to write that up here, f triple prime of x is 2 over x plus 1, sorry, 1 plus x to the third. Okay, so now I'm going to have to consider that. On the AP test, usually at this point, you would have a graph of this function or some important values given, but we're going to have to stop and think about it ourselves. So I'm going to graph the third derivative of f, that's 2 over x plus 1 to the negative third, and we're going to check out its behavior when x is, the absolute value of x is less than 0 0.1. That means x is between negative 0 0.1 and positive 0.1. All right, so that's a graph of the third derivative of f. I graphed it on the interval negative 1 to 1. We only need to know about it on the interval from negative 0.1 to positive 0.1. But you can see in that whole interval, the third derivative of f is decreasing. I mean, the maximum value that the third derivative could ever have is at the left endpoint of the interval that we care about. And that interval is from negative 0.1 to 0.1. So the maximum value of the third derivative of f on our interval is the third derivative of f evaluated at negative 0.1. I'm going to write that. The m that I'm going to use when I write this expression is going to be the third derivative of f evaluated at negative 0.1. So m is going to equal, here's the third derivative of f, 2 over negative 0.1 plus 1 cubed. So m is 2 over 0.99 cubed. So I could write that the absolute value of the error term, the absolute value of the difference between the approximation we would make with this little polynomial under these conditions, and the actual value has to be less than or equal to 2 over 0.99 cubed all over n plus 1. Remember, n is the number derivative we used to get the polynomial that we used. So this was order 2, so this is going to be 3, so 2 plus 1, so 3 factorial times the absolute value of x minus a to the n plus 1. Again, n is 2, so this is going to be third. So x is somewhere between positive and negative 0.1 minus a in this case is zero because we said we're it's the center right the so x is between negative point one and positive point one all to the third okay so that looks like a mess but you could simplify this expression and it's really kind of nice to know that you have this whatever this simplifies out to 
and I see in your textbook that it simplifies out to 4.6 times 10 to the negative fourth. Your error has to be less than that. And you can check in your book, this is page 499. They actually make an, a graph of the difference between the actual value and the computed value and prove that the error is in fact um, significantly smaller.